welcome back to another episode of Creative Visions TV. I'm your host, Karen Dahlman, and today we have a really exciting topic to discuss. It's one that's near and dear to my heart. So let me ask you this question. What do mediumship, channeling, and works of art have in common, especially when all three are practiced together? Well, you get divinely inspired and maybe guided messages, which is known as spirit art. So it can be received visually, audibly, and even in dreams. The receiver, the one who is channeling, may paint, write, speak, draw, sing, whatever it is they are receiving. We will be speaking with a guest in this episode who not only does her own spirit art, but also collects it. So before I bring my guest on today, let me tell you a little bit about her. She has a degree in art from the Pratt Institute from New York City, and she worked as a professional graphic designer. Then she went on to obtain her PhD in the Media Ecology Department at New York University. Now, she worked as a communication professor teaching at several universities, including Rochester, Institute of Technology, and Fordham University. The author of nine books, she wrote on topics of internet, uh, relationships and visual communication, and she wrote her first spirit book in 2019 about mediumship called Unfolding Physical Mediumship. Her mediumship studies began when she moved to Rochester, known as the birthplace of spiritualism, you guys. She studied at Arthur Finley College, I know some of you know that what that college is, and became a certificate holder from the Spiritualist National Union. Her background and love for art had led her to become a spirit artist and collect the works of others. She even opened a spirit art gallery in Casa Dega, New York. You guys, Casa Dega, New York, you know what that is. That's where Lily Dale is. She runs classes and displays spirit-inspired creative images. Currently, she is also the host of a wonderful show on Bold Brave Media Network. And recently, I had the opportunity to appear on that show. So without further ado, you guys, let us welcome Dr. Susan Barnes to the show. Welcome, Susan. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. It's so fun to have conversations with you, Karen. I know we had a really great one, didn't we? When we were talking about um, the Ouija board, you guys, Ouija board. Now, Susan, I got to ask you, what are your thoughts about Ouija board? Well, I have to tell you, you did change my thoughts about oh. them uh, because I didn't realize how much they could be used in the spiritual context. The only catch, as my friend Wendy Zamet said when I told her about this, is that people may try to use it as a shortcut. Interesting. Because in order to get the spirit messages, you really have to do some work. I mean, on yourself and in the, the spirit world. So it's I, I love that. I love that. You guys, we talk about here all the time, the board and the planchette aren't the most important things. It's yourself. And we talk about how you must really work on yourself being centered, grounded, and learning how to use yourself as the walking Ouija board. So we talk about that. So Susan, that, that's impressive that you walked away with that. A lot of people don't mention that part. A lot of people think, oh, spooky, evil, scary Ouija boards. And I'm reading this book now, which is really interesting because the author went from table tilting, which is yes, no answers, to using a talking board, a Ouija board, because then they could spell things out and get more information. But again, she was really leery. She was like afraid to use it. But no, I mean, I, I understand the difference now and I understand that if you really come at the board with good spiritual intention and you'll get good spiritual results. Absolutely, absolutely. So. You know what? Let's talk about Lily Dale. Let's start off there since you have a background and she lives in Lily Dale, you guys. Actually, the art galleries now move back into Lily Dale. Wonderful. Dale, but I moved it back into Lily Dale. It's on 3rd Street, um, which is one of the main drags. Um, and we have, I have jewelry that I make and I have um, all kinds of art. 
Now, the jewelry, is it also divinely inspired when you, you make the jewelry? The jewelry I make has, I use stones with characteristics. So that, for example, I'll have a bracelet that wards off um, negativity or a bra bracelet for protection or a bracelet for maybe a health issue like diabetes. Um, so they're for all different things, of course, and for spiritual, you know, bringing out more spirituality in the individual. Yeah, I, I mean, that's important to think about the qualities that these these or characteristics these stones might bring to us or the aspects of, of kind of mediums you're using such as is it copper for condu conductivity or crystals for clarity and so that's that's interesting now tell us a little bit about this this art studio what do people or i should say art gallery what do people expect to see there well i have a wide range of things i could show you some examples love to see it yes you know, I have a wide range from things that are realistic. There we go. Tell us about that piece. This piece? Well, this piece is a piece I did a long time ago. And what I didn't realize, I was doing spirit art without realizing it. Because these pieces were all trying to combine contemporary advertising images with is with um, spiritual types of images or objects. And so it really is like a past life series. Oh. So she obviously had a past life in, in the Greek and Roman times where they were making and doing the columns. So are you saying this is one of your past lives? Um, I don't know yet, but uh, I'd say that because uh, I'm just now getting into more of my past life, mm. and I'm trying to um, do a new kind of art. Uh, my samples aren't done yet, where I do the past life pictures for people. So you tap into their spirit or their energy, and you are divinely guided to what paint is it acrylic. Well, no, it's in char it's in pastels because the image kind of evolved out of the pastels so i had to put like a gray background down and now i'm figuring out where the faces go and i'll put the, the flesh color face in and then it's coming to me like for example i'm doing one for my friend ray now and i know that he had one lifetime as a templar mm. as, um, i also know he had a lifetime back in like Turkey, Middle East as a woman, because I got a face with a flowing scarf on it. So this is what I'm exploring for him. You know, I'm sure he had a biblical past also. So what is it, you sit with somebody? Uh, kind of explain this process. How do you get these images, Susan? Uh, mostly it's through meditation. Hmm. You know, I'll sit with it. I mean, I know Ray very well, so I was going to try to have the person touch the paper, but because I'm not in Lilydale right now, um, I haven't been able to do that. But I know Ray enough that I can kind of tap into his energy, and so I'll tap into Ray's energy, and then it, I'll work on the past life. portraits. And are you conscious of what you're painting or drawing down, or is it more free form? Well, part of it is trying to see what's coming out of the materials. Mm -hmm. so you kind of intuit that. And then you try to keep your mind open so that I don't say, um, oh, he's a Templar. No, I didn't say that. It was like I was drawing something, and all of a sudden I saw the cross, and I said, Templar. And I knew that he was a, a Templar. In fact, they just told me how to draw it. Oh, wow. Okay, so you're working with your guides or his guides, too, to make this come through? Yeah, well, he and I also do a lot of, ch of channeling and trance together, so um, he's very in tune with the other side, so um, I can get in tune with him. I think that's an important part. It, um, we were talking about earlier with the Ouija board, how there's so much more to develop within yourself first to really get divinely inspired messages, which you guys know that I receive and I relay them back in my book. So this is a form of spirit communication, you guys. When I write my books, 
and I'm allowing the information to come through. And so what I'm hearing Susan say is something similar. They already channel, they already work with divinely inspired information and then tapping into that to focus on the intention of reaching this person's past lives really is a nice marriage to make with spirit to have these things come through. I, I love the way you explain that, Susan. But you just made a very important point, intention. Mm -hmm. You have to state the intention. You know, for example, if you're doing a piece of spirit art, before you do it, you have to state the intention. So in this case, the intention would be to tap into raise lives? Tap into raise aura, tap into raise soul energy so that I can feel his past lives. Mm. Now, we had a gentleman on this show as a guest of ours yeah. named Freddie Silva. I don't know if you know him, Susan, or not, but he talks extensively about the Knights Templar. He's done a lot of research into them, and he's researched them all the way back to Portugal. You've probably heard of him before. Um, he's been on a lot of the yeah. shows and stuff, and, and you, but anyway, he came on here and talked to us about it. So I'm always very fascinated with the Knights Templar. So that's, I can't well, wait to see how this turns out for Ray. This, we'll see, it's very interesting because in one of our channel sessions, uh, Mary came through and she told us that when she left the Middle East and came up through, I guess, up through the tops of, uh, up through the top of Africa into Europe, she was in Portugal. And, oh, yeah. Is this Mary Magdalene or is this Mary, Mary Magdalene? Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. She, There's another connection. Through Portugal, and she was actually pregnant when Jesus was killed, and so she had a baby. Um, Is that and, Sarah you're talking about? Yes, Sarah. She had Sarah. Now, what the Knights Templar were supposed to do is protect that family lineage. Mm -hmm. So that was their role. So yes, Portugal, she was in Portugal. And um, because then she went up into France and all of that. But at that time, I don't know how the borders between France and Portugal really were. I mean, I think it might be fuzzy. So um, those borders are close. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. And I found out the Knights Templar basically went out, were out of Portugal. Isn't that so, interesting? Yeah. Now, I didn't know that until um, Freddie came on the show and shared that with us. And, and you're confirming that from your channel information. That's fascinating. Yeah. Wow. So you guys, when you tap into this other dimension and you work with yourself first, let's, let's remember that's the key thing here. Get yourself clear, get yourself grounded, have your intentions, learn to practice reaching the energies. You start getting all kinds of information that can confirm or validate and maybe show you something new. I mean, it's, it, this is why I do this. I know Susan, you're, you, you're a love of this stuff. You're a love of art, art, making art, but also spirit art. So talk to us a little bit more about that combination. You doing your own artwork, and then what makes that different from when you do spirit art? Intention. <laughs> Easy enough. Thank you. Yeah. I, I mean, but then also when I was doing this whole series of past life images, I was being directed and guided to do it, but it wasn't like in my consciousness, this is spirit art. It wasn't until later that I realized all of the art I was doing was spirit art. Well, most of it. Isn't that fascinating now? And, and when I was writing my books, I mean, I knew they were giving me information to write and dreams and stuff, but I wouldn't consider that part of spirit art until I sat down and really thought about it. It's divinely inspired messages and my media and that, those regards were writing where it could be poetry sometimes and then my, my media sometimes is painting. Now, this right here is something I was divinely guided to paint. Uh, it was, I actually did it with oil pastels. Because I love working with chalk or oil pastels. That's oil pastels. And I went through a meditation. I've been doing all these meditations um, for like hours. I mean, just intense. And with the intention of receiving a message. And so this is what came out was this beautiful crystal in hands and just the levitation and lightness of this energy. So I wouldn't have called that spirit art when I did that, you guys, many years ago. I, w I think it was five or almost six years ago. I considered it more like... a just divinely guided art. But that's what spirit art is, you guys. Many of you guys are doing this already. It's divinely guided art, and there are different categories of it. And what I would call that is spirit-inspired art. 
Okay, so tell, talk to us about these categories and show us what you have. Well, I don't have all the categories with me, but basically um, the categories, and I do teach most of this, um, the highest category in terms of spiritualism is the spirit portrait, uh-huh. which is and the medium draws a portrait of someone in spirit and the receiver recognizes it. So that is considered to be the best evidence in spirit art. And then you have like aura graphs, which are drawings from the person's aura. And sometimes you can get a little bit of evidential information in those when the artist like draws an image of a grandmother's house or draws a represent, you know, an image of the grandmother or family members. Um, so that can become mediumistic. The other thing I do is I do wax art, which is like scrying. The scrying is an art form as well. So we got um, wax art, scrying. Um, you know, can, have, can I interrupt you here? Explain this wax art to people so they understand the concept a little bit better. Okay, the wax art that I do um and this is where a little bit of physical phenomena comes in. Um, I'm getting the deck at my, to my cards out. I make these cards. Hold them up. Yeah, there you go. Get them up there. Okay. It looks like wax make, art. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is wax art. They're abstract. And what I do is I work on a piece of, like, um, oak tag paper, poster board paper. It's a little heavier. So it's cardstock. And one side is a little shiny. And... The, it, for these cards, I just work in crayons. Oh! And then I melt the crayons on a little iron and paint with it. And I'll work on a piece until it kind of feels done. And then I take the big piece of paper and cut it up into cards. Then what happens is in a reading, I would have somebody pick a card. Mm. And then within the card, and it's easier to see in this one because it's bigger. Um, yeah, that's huge. If you can see, where is it? Here. There's an eye here. I see it. Huge. Yeah, huge. There's an eye and a face here. The interesting thing is that when I was doing this reading on the card um, for the person, I saw the face somewhere. I don't know. It was down in the bottom. I think it was here. I think this was, the face was in here, probably this way. Yeah, I saw the face here with a veil over it. And so I did the reading and I said, this woman has um, something covering her face. She's either keeping this secret or, you know, wants people not to understand something. And it turns out that the person I was reading for, her best friend had face cancer. And wore a veil over her face. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so that was... Okay, so that that would be more your evidential type of spirit art. Yes, but sometimes I get evidential with the wax. Oh, of course. Of course, yeah. Situation um, last fall where I was reading one of the wax cards. And usually with the wax cards, I'll find the face... And I'll start describing features of this. So I saw a man, and I said, he definitely has a mustache, brown hair, da 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 And the woman goes, oh, I know who that is. And she pulled out a photograph of the guy, and the photograph looked like the representation on the wax card. Amazing. Now, if you use that wax card with somebody else, you would scry something else. No, oh, no. What happens is that if you, let's say you use this wax card, I give it to you. You do? Okay, this is interesting. That's why I do these with crayons because they don't cost very much money. So I just give them away to the person. Yeah. Okay, I, I so you, let me ask you this technique. I, I think I did this many years ago. You put, you put the crayon shavings on paper with wax paper on top and iron it? No. Oh, tell us, tell us, tell us. I have an iron over here. Um, I get... Little irons from Joanne Fabrics. They're about this, about as big as my hand. Oh, here. little. Okay. And then I just take the crayon sticks and melt it on the 
the, the iron has to be hot, so it melts it on the iron so that it's liquid, and then I turn the iron over and paint with it. Oh, okay, that's a little different. Okay, you guys got to get a bunch of little irons so you don't ruin your big, your good iron. <laughs> that's right. That's what I tell people: go to the charity shop and get get used iron. Yeah, we did, we did it with um, shavings, and then you would put the wax paper on top and then iron it. But that that leave that gets rid of that whole idea of the flow on the heat. You don't quite get what you would get doing it your way. That's fascinating. So so you know because your artistic background, your graphic artist background, you obviously know a lot about using art media. And do you find that one media works better for you, or do you find that any media can work for you with the spirit art? Well, I work in a variety of different media. I mean, for example, I have an oil painting, which I need to finish, mm -hmm. which is a drawing of a guide, you know, one of my guides. Okay. So that's done for oil. Um, these, like this one, these are done in watercolors. Oh, that's watercolor. Okay. Wow. It was water that's been put onto wax, but here... This is another watercolor one. This is one I just did. Oh, yeah. That's the one with the Olympic chamber, the little alchemist bottle. Yeah. This is, so this woman had, in the past, she had a, definitely a relationship to alchemy. Mm. Yeah. That's fantastic. So, do you know yeah, who that yeah. is you drew, or do, were you drawing it for a client? No, no. I just, I just draw images to represent the idea of past lives. So you may you might find somebody who who feels a, an affinity towards that, and then when that person, it's like then they know that's their, their, their that's no the they know it's themselves or you know it's them them. Is that how that works? Um, um, somebody could find an affinity to it, and that could be the reason why. Is they've also been anonymous in a past life. They might not realize that at the time, you know, because we don't remember our past lives um, until we come become much more spiritually advanced. Mine are just starting to become more aware to me. I mean, over the years, some different ones have come to me, but now more of them are starting to fall into place. And how are they coming to you, Susan? What techniques? Um, one came to me in a dream. Actually, two came to me in dreams. Two came to me in dreams. Um, and... One was just co clear cognizant, just a knowing. Mm -hmm. And um, they're, they're, it's like spirit will bring them into my mind and let me know, you know, which is truth, which isn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, so, you've, you've made that connection and you become that conduit to receive the information. I think that's a beautiful way to receive guidance, you guys. Listen, listen to what she's talking about with the dreams and just the knowing. Sometimes you just know. You go, I've been here before. It's like that deja vu feeling and you see an image and you go, trust that. Just start paying attention to your mind, your imagination, we'll call it the imaginal realm because that's the way spirit will speak to you. It's always through that imaginal facility or conduct that we have within ourselves. That's how they can come through. So... That's interesting. So now tell us a little bit more about um, maybe some more examples of spirit art you have to show us. Okay. Um, here's the new, this is not wax, but it's similar to the wax. Um, um, this one's more like a landscape. Ooh. So what is the media if it's not wax? It's acrylics. Are they watered it's down acrylics? Yeah, they're, they're poured acrylics. Oh, so wow. Medium in it, yeah. And now, so. would this be divinely guided? or Which which category is this one in, would you say? Well, yeah, I, mean, I set the intention, and okay. I start to work. And then, um, you know, spirit kind of guides me to, to play with the paints and do it. And, I mean, part of it's got... A little bit of chance happening because you can control mm -hmm. the media completely, you know. So. Especially when it's watered down, you get that really beautiful watery feeling. So I want to share with, with the people, I, I've talked to you guys before about this woman who, named Sherlyn. She's been on the show for a couple of shows a while back, you guys. She created these wonderful spirit cards. I would call her a mystic artist, Susan, and this is something she did. She's now transitioned to the other dimension, and she actually came back and taught me how to use her cards with a special reading she gave me. And I've talked to you guys about this before. 
This is one of one of her last paintings she did. I, it, right now it's a print. If you can see this. What she would do, Susan, similar to what you're talking about with the, with the media, she would use acrylics, water some of it down, let it be loose, and it would just start forming images. And she, it's not like she would go, I'm going to paint a goddess. She goes, I'm going to allow spirit to speak through me. That was her intention every day. And so I like to call this one the cosmic dancer because look at that. It looks like this cosmic energy. Yeah. Yeah dancing look at that and so this would be like a, a divinely inspired um spirit art i would assume all these different faces and symbolism and then all of a sudden the eagle appears i mean this is why i love her artwork there's it's so rich in imagery and symbolism but that would be something divinely guided um and i love that you use the, the media as well loosened down uh with the with the acrylics i will do that to you guys because here here's another here's oh i love the darkness in this one yeah, I did it on black canvas. So gorgeous. And this, um, this one is on a white canvas. Look at that face. Two fa there are two faces in there I can see already. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, what I'm gonna do with these is I'll have them in the gallery, and if someone comes, I can interpret the image for them. You know. Um, you know. For example. Um, here we see a uh, green, so there's a bunch of healing stuff going on here. Uh, we see that this person is very spiritual with all the, the lavender. Lavender, I was going to say, the purple, yep. <laughs> and I would say that this person is, is fairly well-centered because of the circular types of shapes about it. Um, you know. But anyway, so those are the type, types of types of things I can do. This one. That's neat. This, this person would have a little more erratic kind of personality. You know, um, but they would also be the type of person that's spontaneous as well. Maybe that's why I like that one. <laughs> I'm very spontaneous. <laughs> one, the person would probably be more thoughtful. And more um, organized in mm. some way, but yeah, this one's this one person would be the type of person that would take chances. Wow! Or new and different things. That's exciting. So if they come to this art gallery, they're going to see these images there. Yes. Okay. Now, Susan, I know you teach, so let's talk a little bit about you, what your programs you have. Well, I have two that I do for the afterlife research group on Zoom, and you can find those at victorzamp.com slash Zoom. And um, I teach mediumship twice a month on Sundays, and I teach spirit art twice a month on Tuesdays. In fact, I have a class tonight, <laughs> um, so which I have to remember. Uh, but anyway, yes, so I do that. And is that free things. to attend or is there a price to pay for these? Free. Okay, you guys, the links will be below if you want to go and, and attend. I highly recommend it. I met Susan at the Afterlife Conference in, I think it was the fall of 2018 in Scottsdale. I sat in on her lecture about spirit art and I was just mesmerized. Uh, I, I, I usually don't go up and meet people because I, you know, I listen. I'm like, okay, yay. They're, they're usually crowded around with a lot of people. But to her, I had to make my way through there to say hi to her because it was like, you just really touched me. And what you were talking about, the way she presented it, it was just so good, you guys. You ever have a chance to go to her class or listen to her speak? I highly recommend. So check it out, people. Check it out. Yeah, well, I'll be doing um, this summer, I'll be doing um, courses in Lilydale. And um, I'm doing face-to-face -face three days of spirit art. We're going to be focusing on orographs. We're doing Ooh. two days of orographs, which I use watercolor pencils for. And um, then the last day, we're doing wax. Oh, fun. Okay, you don't have to ruin your own irons. Come to her place and ruin her irons. All right, so tell us about this. <laughs> tell us about the orographs. Like, do people actually get to learn to do this themselves? Yes. Um, the first day we're going to experiment with ourselves and with others and look at symbolism and things. The second day we're going to look at the different maps. There are different kind of orograph maps. 
that people can um, use. And so we'll do that with the interpretation and they'll practice interpreting themselves and others. So if they come to this, do they, do they stay in Lilydale or do they stay like at a hotel nearby? How does that work? Um, either way. Okay. Um, there are hotels, if somebody needs a hotel, uh, in Dunkirk, Fredonia area. But there's a whole bunch of guest houses oh. in the hotel in Lilydale. And staying in the Lilydale Hotel is definitely interesting because... I uh, experienced phenomena there, the bedroom. Ooh. And the higher up you stay in the hotel, the more spooky things happen. I love it, you guys. This is your opportunity to go up there, stay there, and actually enjoy spirit art and learn it yourself what to do. You're learning from one of, one of the best in the country about spirit art. So check it out, you guys. Links will be below. And I believe your workshop's not listed yet, but they can go to Lilydale and they'll eventually find it on Lilydale website. Yeah, so like July, 9, like July 18th. Okay, well, check it out, you guys. Now, I got to tell you, I'm super excited. I'm part of Susan's program. Not that program, but Susan, you want to tell them about what, what I'm, I'm a part of this summer? Yeah, Karen is doing a one online program, which is great. Now, what I don't know, in fact, I forgot to ask, is how many of our face-to-face -face programs are being presented online. Ah. Yeah. I know that we can do um, autographs, definitely. The wax, you kind of have to have your own supplies to do it, um, but... Yeah, and I am doing a lecture on spirit art, and um, as part of the lecture, I will be having people using the planchettes, planchettes and um, automatic drawing. Well, let's talk about the planchette, because you guys know that's that's paired with the planchette. You see behind me, you got some planchettes back there. The planchettes are paired with the board, but let's talk about the planchette, because that can be used with spirit art and inspired writing or spirit writing. Well, now, I guess if we move a little bit into the history yes. of spirit art, that's what some of the early mediums were using to do their spirit art was planchette. And they were getting abstract drawings with the planchette. Here's yeah. a modern day one, you guys. Now, I know we have the old fashioned ones, and you've seen it before on my show. Brad and Hodge was on here where he showed all of his old fashioned, um, the ones that like from 1853, you guys. This is a modern day one somebody had made for me. The aperture, you put the pencil in. This one has the ball bearings, which is nice because it rolls nicely on paper. And then you can you could write with it if it if the writing comes through or the painting or picture comes through. So this is something great to play with. And I know Susan has some of these, and you're going to have people work with these, aren't you? Yes, I'm having some made so that I can put, um, you know, like three people on a planchette so they can oh nice try and around and get an image. Yeah, see what they get. I've done this before. That's great. Well, one time, and guys, it was with this one. You know, Rodney, Rodney, my board partner, um, he and I sat down with this, hands on both sides, and we just said, hey, guides, the guides we always talk to, they came through and they started writing a message to us, and the message they said to us was, are we going to go backwards and go slow now? <laughs> because the planchette for spelling is so much faster, and it was kind of cursive and illegible, but that's what they wrote to us. The funniest thing, I don't think I told anybody that yet. But, um, yeah, so, you know, um, this kind of spirit, I, I think this might be better for art because it's like the scribble drawings. Sometimes the writing, it writes back on itself, and so it can be kind of complicated. But it is such a wonderful tool that really spearheaded uh, in terms of the Ouija board working and a lot of this spirit writing coming through that came through in the late 1800s. So yeah. I love it. So Gina Jurgen Houghton, who was one of the early spirit artists, um, Georgina Houghton had a whole group of people um, that were using using the planchettes, and she was doing workshops, for people and having salons for people to come and show their art and look at it in the 1800s. So yeah, this um, goes way back. So was she using it like by herself or with a person when she was getting the, the pictures coming through? I think she was mostly using it by herself. 
Interesting. So you can you can try it with a group of people, like 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 Susan's going to be doing two or three people at a planchette, or by yourself. I've tried it both ways. I'm not as good using the planchette, you guys, as I am with the Ouija board. Disclosure, <laughs> but I but I can I can use the planchette because I'm so used to or automatic writer. I'm so used to doing the Ouija board, as you guys know. Um, so it's such fascinating history. If you look at how a lot of these tools and even the things you're doing now has come from this rich history of how people work with the art media. Now you talked at one of your programs and one I actually intended in um, Scottsdale about the women who had these paintings. And there were sisters, and they'd put them in like the window, and all of a sudden, this picture would appear. They'd paint it. Like, do you want to talk about that? Because it was such a cool. Sister, you're talking about. Yeah, these are called precipitated paintings. We don't really have the close. We don't have anybody doing it like they did. Mm. Um, we do have one person that is doing precipitation, and he has been trying to develop people to do it. But what the bank sisters would do is they were they were very very strong physical mediums, and their abilities for mediumship because they could do the automatic writing, they could do all kinds of things, showed up when they were kids because things used to fall out of the ceiling and, and dishes would go off the shelves in the kitchen, things like that. What the bank sisters would do is is they would take. Well, sometimes they would do it by a window. In Lilydale, what they would do is they would do, we have a auditorium there. They would put an easel up, easel, they would put the canvases up on the stage in the auditorium. They would have given everybody numbers. They would pick a number, and then that person would go up, and the bank sister would stand on each side of the canvas. And over the front of the canvas, you would see kind of a smoky, it would get kind of smoky, cloudy, which was ectoplasm. Mm. And, and gradually, like a Polaroid picture, an image would emerge. And it was a portrait of a loved one that was in spirit. Wow. Because, of, of the person on stage that came up, it was their person. Yeah. And um, these pictures are as vibrant today as they were in the day they did them. And they look like they may have been done with like a chalk medium, um, but it's so fine. There's no fingerprints, no brush marks, nothing. It was all done through spirit. Amazing. You guys, well, that was one of the stories. There was some more stories she shared, but with that one, I was like, what? I remember hearing about this briefly in some lecture on many things, but nobody spent as much time on it as you did. And I was just like going, what? This is so amazing. So, People thought they were charlatans, and other people believed them. I mean, that always happens, you guys, when you're doing this kind of work. People, I, I didn't see it happen, so I can't believe it. But it, did, what does Lily Dale, because they were doing this there, what is what is Lily Dale's take on the Bang Sisters? Oh well, it wasn't just the Bang Sisters; it was also the Campbell brothers. Oh yeah, that's what, yeah. Two two pairs. Um, the Campbell brothers really weren't brothers; they were gay lovers. But in the, that day, they yeah. couldn't be known that way, couldn't be outed. So um, they also did these incredible precipitated paintings. And one of the ones they did is of a, their spirit guide, Azura. And that's on loan now at the Minneapolis Museum, which has a fantastic show mm -hmm. all on spirit art. Anybody in that area has got to go see it. It's called Supernatural America. You guys, links will be below. I highly recommend it. Um, Susan, you have some stuff there, don't you, on loan? No, I don't have stuff on loan, but I'm in the book. Oh, you're in the book. That's it. She's in the book. Um, Brandon Hodge, who was on the show, has stuff on loan. So yeah. there, there's people you've met on the show that are showing there. You guys got to see it. I haven't been there, but I've seen the book. It's amazing. But links will be below for that. Uh, so Lily Dale really stood behind, or the spiritualist camp of Lily Dale really stood behind um, these these brothers and sisters, right? Absolutely, absolutely, and you can see samples of their work there. Wonderful, yeah, I'm telling you, I I I can't wait. I'm gonna go in person to Lily Dale, hopefully in 2023. But like Susan said, I'll be doing. I'm a, I'm affiliated with them, doing an online course for them this summer. So I'm super excited about that. You guys go in person if you've been wanting to go. 
go attend Susan's class. It's highly worth it. And check out Lily Dale. I mean, there's so much cool stuff going on. Now, Susan, I had told you this before. I have been to Casadega in, in uh, Florida. So that's my extent with going to an assembly and experiencing the people that live there, the readers, and going into the, the, the service area. I mean, it's incredible if you haven't been there either. But I heard this is really cool. So um, you can confirm this for me. Isn't there a river that runs through Lilydale called Casadega and a river that runs through Casadega, Florida, that, that's called Lilydale? Very possibly because um, what happened was the people from Lilydale went down and founded Casadega in Florida because they would get out, like I'm doing now, they would get out of the snow for the yeah, right. winter of Florida, you know, and then go back to the Dale for the summer. Hey, interesting. So, yeah, I can see them founding. I think that's what I read somewhere, you guys, but check that out yourself. Um, all right, so if people want to do their own spiritual art and, and to start on this process, I mean, it's very phenomenal. And we're talking about, it could be poetry, it could be, but it could be any level of spirit art. It could be the divinely inspired, it could be the precipitation, it could be all these different levels she talked about. What would you suggest to people just to even start? Well, I suggest people start with automatic drawing. Mm. I mean, because, um, I don't have time to do one, but um, you, you just, yeah. You just basically, it's good to actually use your opposite hand. I was doing this last night using my opposite hand, and um, you don't think. I was doing this while I was watching television, so oh. that I wasn't thinking at all about, about the drawing. And again, now I'm talking to you, so I'm not thinking about the drawing. And, uh, and you're letting your hand go right now. You're just letting it go. Yeah, and I forgot to ask you for a question. Oh, okay. usually I say, I, you know, if you have a question you can get an answer to, you can usually try to figure it out through the automatic drawing. Oh, okay. So you just, so I, I see a star in there. <laughs> so you just let it, you just let your hand move as you're talking or watching TV to, to, to check out. Right. And if you ask a question in advance, now I, we forgot to ask a question, but. I can see the way this drawing is that it's very positive because of all the round and oval shapes in oh, it and you saw cool. the star in it, so that would show success. Do you see the star in the middle too, you guys? Yeah, I actually see it. It's right it's right here. Yeah, I see it too. It's so yeah. funny. So yeah, um that's what you do. You you um, do that, and then you look for it and can interpret it. You can also do that with the wax, because mm. um, when people start working with the wax, they usually it's interesting. They get themes. They get like fairy themes or oh. uh, wooded themes or beach the scenes. It's it's so you can um, look at the art and again start to tell your questions. I mean, if someone had a question. You could probably answer it through these, you know, uh, but I have to set the intention ahead of time. Okay. You know? Well, you kind of roughly showed us the process, which is good because I, I think that's it. So have a question you want to ask. You can, so, so give me an example of some questions people might ask when they first start out with, with doing the scribbling exercise. I'm trying to think. Would it be something like, could, is my spirit guide here or my spirit guide, do you have a message for me? Well, yeah, we could say, does my spirit guide have a message for me? Okay. Um, you could also ask it a mundane life question. Am I going to get a new job? Ooh, okay. You, ask, like, you know, um, and you can tell, by, by the way, um, the drawing comes out, whether it's kind of a positive or negative answer to it. But you also might get some insight. Like with this one, we got the insight of the star. So obviously it was a spirit message in that. And the message I, I feel like is saying, you are a shining star. Exactly. I mean, really, it, it, it's highlighted right in the middle of all this imagery around it. I love it. You know what's so interesting, Susan, in my background as an art therapist, we would call that the, the non-dominant hand scribble exercise, literally. 
And I would use it with a lot of people when they said, oh, I can't draw. Or somebody came in and said, oh, I'm an artist. I said, well, hey, put this in your left hand and let's just scribble away. And we did which kind of what you did. It's very fascinating. This is one of the techniques you use. We would use it with people who are trying to work with healing and, and as, get their own messages too. So you guys, this can be used on, you know, just like you said, more mundane things about your life or maybe um, things, well, if I can get the job, that's pretty huge. But just like... Um, what color clothes should I wear today? <laughs> you know, or something like that. It's like you can go from uh, simple all the way up to complex. Like, does my angel have a message? So I love that, and it it is, works with all kinds of people. I've used it so many times with children and adults, and now you guys can even trust yourself to be in touch with the unseen dimensions and receive messages. I think it's brilliant to start there. That is a kind of an entry level to start, right? Yeah, I mean, and then I also do it with the wax. I use the wax in a different way. I have metal plates that are about this big. Mm -hmm. And you put, I put the metal plates on a skillet, you know, like a pancake skillet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Up, then have the person take the crayons and melt the crayons on the plate. And then I use um, finger painting paper mm. and make of the wax. So you, do you just pour it on there or drip it or how does that work? Um, the person draws like a, an image on the plate, metal plate with the crayons. Okay. And it smushes when you pull the, the print off. But then you put the print on top of it and pull it up and you, you get to see what's there. I love it. It's almost like the the the, the Warshock test with the ink blots and how, yeah, right. Absolutely, absolutely. So I mean, there are all kinds of different things you can do mm. with it. So if they come to your event. They're going to learn a lot of these techniques to try on their own, um, which will be fascinating. Yeah, I'm going to have to remember to bring my skillet. <laughs> <laughs> have skillet, will travel. So listen, Susan, um, we've come to the place in the in the talk today where we're getting ready to close down, but I wanted to ask you, is there any final messages you have for the audience, including where they can find you? And I'll put all links below, you guys. Um, yeah, they can find me. I have a website, which is www.spiritartgallery.net. And you can find the classes are on there and you can find more information about me and get in touch with me um, if you want to. Um, my message for everyone is you can be an artist. Everyone can be an artist, especially with the spirit art, because with the spirit art, spirit's going to help you. So mm. don't ever say you can't do it because you can. And I have people... This is amazing. I have people doing portraits who've never drawn before, stick figures, and they're recognized by the recipient as someone in spirit that they know. Because there's always a feature, always something that is portrayed in the image that um, is recognizable. Nice. Very well done. Um, yeah, that's, that's awesome. So you guys check her out for sure. Links below. Susan, thank you so much for joining us on this show today. Really appreciate the time you took to be with us. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure. So there you go, everybody. Here is a person who's out there really pushing the boundaries of consciousness, reaching into the unseen dimensions and bringing it back in divinely inspired art. She talked to us about the different levels of spirit art, as well as how to do some techniques yourself and where to start. So get out there and know that spirit's there waiting to help you do your own art and you don't have to be an artist. So thank you everyone for joining me here again. This was Creative Visions TV and I'm Karen Dahlman. See you again real soon. Bye-bye. Oh.